Blanton's is one of the most sought after bourbons in the world. Here's five bourbons that are sitting on shelves right now that I think are better. Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of The Bourbon Hutch, and thanks so much for joining me on this journey through the world of whiskey. So if you've been following the channel for a little bit now, you'll know that I have kind of an interesting relationship with Blanton's. I know it's a single barrel product, so your experience may differ considerably, but for me, this bottle of Blanton's, the one that I own, the one that I've tasted, I've actually tasted two, I've tasted another one too, but both of them just didn't really do it for me. Not a huge fan, I think it's decent whiskey. My bottle in particular just has this kind of musty note that I don't love. To be honest with you, I just, the hype does not match up with the juice that I've tasted from Blanton's so far. And that's because the hype is just, you know, enormous. So many people think about bourbon, allocated bourbon, what they're hunting for, and Blanton's is at the top of the list. It's wonderfully marketed, beautifully presented, but honestly, the juice, in my opinion, there's a lot out there that's better. And in fact, I've come up today with a list of five bourbons that are all in that same relative price point, somewhere between 50 to 70-ish dollars, that I just think are much better than Bland's, much more consistent, and gonna give you an overall better experience. At least, that's been my experience so far. So, let's dive into the list with bottle number one. This one is, sometimes in pockets it can be harder to find, but honestly, it's just a really well-made bourbon, and that is Heaven Hill Bottled in Bond. Put it right here next to Blanton's, a little bit in front of it, because honestly, I think it's better. I think it's full of rich vanilla, cherry, oak, really quintessential, great bourbon flavors, 100 proof, at least seven years old, really, really good stuff. Blanton's, I think is thought to be in that like approaching eight-year-old range so relatively similar age here a little bit higher proof on the heaven hill and just the profile seems to me to be the more well-rounded flavorful whiskey and when you do see it you can see this bottle for right around fifty dollars usually sometimes a little cheaper sometimes a little bit more but it should sit in that range next we've got a release that came out last year i think it's a really really solid product from a uh, bourbon source that I just have come to love, and that is Barrel Vantage. So almost everything Barrel does, I have enjoyed thoroughly. This one in particular has this like peaches and cream, good spiciness. It's a toasted oak as part of the finish. Really, really nice presentation overall. And the proof here is 114 proof. Everything Barrel does is at cast strength. Um, so I honestly just think this kind of kicks Blanton's butt. <laughs> um, it's really, really good stuff. And I've heard about Blanton's that like higher rye, citrusy kind of quality. I, I mean, I take the peaches and cream note here over Blanton's every day. All right, our third bottle on the list is actually what I've got poured up here. So just wanted to pause for a second and say, if you're enjoying all the content coming out of the channel, we'd love to have you aboard as a subscriber for the rest of 2023 and beyond. Trying to hit 2,000 subscribers by the end of 2023 now. So new goal, hope you can help me get there. And while you're at it, hit the like button on this video, it gets it out to more people. And comment down below, what would you put on your own personal list? What are the bourbons that you've experienced that you think are better than Blanton's? But for now, let's taste bottle number three. Smells delightful. Man. That is really good. And that is Bellmead Reserve. So in this case, we've got a 108.3 proof bourbon that has uh, technically been discontinued in the national market. I believe it's still available at the distillery down at Nelson Greenbrier Distillery. But this is a phenomenal bourbon for around $65. People have sung its praises uh, on the whiskey tube community before, especially as it was being pulled out of the national market, people were saying buy it up. I've still seen some on shelves sitting there waiting for people to buy them. Meanwhile, people are standing in, you know, three hour lines to get Blanton's. And this is maybe twice as good in my opinion. It's 
phenomenal stuff. So if you see it on shelves still, or if you've been passing it up, now's the time to grab it, I think. If not, hopefully you can get your hands on one from the distillery or, you know, trading locally, whatever it is. But this is really, really good bourbon. Our last two bottles on this list get into, again, just slightly more spotty to find, but when you do see them, I recommend buying them up because they're both really, really good. We'll start out with one of the older offerings that I've got on the list, and that is Knob Creek 12. To be honest with you, this is one of my favorite bourbons of all time. It's 100 proof, it's 12 years old, rich, oaky, peanut butter, silky smooth peanut butter, vanilla for days, almost like a vanilla cake with some like raisins and fruit in there. It's a wonderful profile presented at a beautiful proof point and usually around 65 to $70 when you do see it. Compare that to Blanton's, which is around that same price. And I just, the lack of age there, it's thinner, it's less proof. Like Knob Creek 12 wins on every metric over Blanton's, if you ask me. All right, last bottle on the list, last but certainly not least, is a bottle that's actually not a bourbon, cheating a little bit, but it's a rye. And since Blanton's is high rye, I felt like this was a fair one to pull into the list, and that is New Riffs Six Year Malted Rye. So we've got something that's probably less aged than Blanton's, a distillery that's been around a lot less in terms of time in history. But this six year malted rye, in terms of that citrusy orange vanilla note that people want and crave from Blanton's, I think this new riff presents it in the even fuller force. It is candied oranges and vanilla for days with some good brown sugar, a little bit of spice, but very subtle spice. This is such an easy sipper. Uh, I've introduced people who don't really drink that much bourbon to this and they have instantly seen it as a favorite. So. In terms of a, a citrusy, orangey, vanilla profile, this six-year malted dry from New Riff, I would take it over Blanton's again, like every day of the week and twice on Sunday. All right, everybody. So that's gonna be the list. These are five bourbons and a rye that I think are better than Blanton's. And you know, it's easy to um, crap on Blanton's. It's easy to denigrate the brand. Again, I don't hate Blanton's. I'm super happy to have a bottle. I was, you know, hunting it in my own right when I first started collecting whiskey because not having one in your collection, you know, it, it's a, an essential piece of most collections. But when you really think about it and when I think about the slate of options that are out there in that $50 to $70 price range, some of which are much easier to find, uh, it is really stark and really clear how much whiskey is out there that I would consider personally better than Blanton's. And I think I'm, I'm not alone in that opinion. So that's my list. Again, let me know in the comments below. What do you think? What do you think of these five? Do you think they're all better than Blanton's? Do you have any gripes with any of these? But then also, what would be on your list? What would you say that you have in your collection or that you've tasted that's better than Blanton's? All right, everybody. Until I see you guys again for another video, all I can say is keep drinking good whiskey and cheers.